It's made a lot of scientists scratch their heads for years, but this morning it seems researchers have an idea on why the famous San Andreas Fault is so sleepy. The answer may involve water. To help explain the study, we're joined now by Dr. Joanne Stock, a seismologist with Caltech. Good morning to you, Joanne. Thank you so much for being here. Um, can you, in Good the morning. simplest of terms, because people have a hard time wrapping their head around some of this stuff, what did researchers find? They found that the occurrence of the big earthquakes down at the southern end of the salt, uh, San Andreas Fault near the Salton Sea is related to if the Salton Sea lake basin is full of water. So it's of course dry right now, but at times in the past it has been flooded by floods on the Colorado River and those times correlate with big earthquakes. When I saw this come across, I, I thought this is just so fascinating because there has been so much discussion, too, about trying to get water into the Salton Sea. Now I'm thinking, oh, I don't think we want that. Uh, what do you think this research, though, really means? Can you describe for people maybe what the future of, of this means for earthquake studies? Well, I don't think we're going to have enough water in the basin to reproduce what happened before because the lake level was very, very high when these earthquakes happened. Um, there's no way now we can get enough water into that basin to fill it up to the point where it would be the same level. So I think for the future, what's important is for us to know that water, as you change water loading in basins, such as the Salton Sea, you can affect the rate of earthquake occurrence. But we aren't worried about this because we don't think there's going to get enough water in there from the you know, Colorado River right now to be able to do that. I can see that overall, but there have been, you know, a number of plans to rehabilitate parts of the Salton Sea. Could just, you know, maybe filling parts of it impact seismic activity, or is it it's really just about filling the entire lake? I think it would be more filling the entire lake. So the, the last time the lake got filled was in 1905 when there's a flooding accident from a drainage canal. And um, that was a very minor amount of flooding compared to what would have happened at the last time when they had one of these big earthquakes. So it's not that we um, are going to expect the earthquakes to stop. We're still expecting earthquakes there, but we don't see a possibility right now for so much water to get in there that it would trigger an earthquake immediately. Now, you know, earthquakes happen because there needs to be some energy released. Does this mean that, you know, we're, we're storing up all of this energy and we could be on the verge of another big earthquake? Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. But not because of anything we're doing, right? It's okay. a natural process of the, uh, the entire fault system. And so, of course, we've had these other big earthquakes like 1906 in San Francisco. That one wasn't triggered by water levels in the Salton Sea. It was just part of the process of the plate slipping. And so... It's the Pacific plate on the west and the North American plate on the east. And it's just, a, you know, always moving from time to time with big earthquakes. And we should point out this doesn't mean that, you know, it's inevitable now that we've discovered this information that there will be an earthquake. Uh, that time will tell. Thank you so much for. Yeah, we can't. We can't predict them. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, right? It's, I mean, we, we'd love to be able to, um, but yes. th that's to come. Dr. Stock, thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us this morning. You can find all the information from this segment on our website, kcalnews.com slash scene on TV. Ruta Bay. All right. Great interview, Jamie. Thank you.